Hey everybody, Bill in Virginia. Welcome back. So this time, the uh, first thing that I'm going to get started with is I'm going to get the uh, guardrails on the uh, straight trestle uh, that I was showing at the end of the last episode here. So I went up and I pulled out a piece of uh, Atlas Flex Track O standard and uh, I can't even read what size it is, but it's just matches their sectional track. Got a whole bunch of this. Uh, before I started this layout, I bought a box that somebody had advertised on eBay and got it at a good price. And I've still got a lot of sticks of the flex track uh, left over. So you never know, maybe a future project in O scale. Anyway, I'm going to take the uh, ties off. You know, this is flexible track. So, uh, you know, get the ties off will be pretty straightforward. I will keep the ties because uh, you never know uh, when I can use them. And as you've seen in other videos, I used extra ties off flex track to make uh, bridge tracks. Uh, works really well. Very easy little process. So anyway, I am going to get started and uh, I'll show you what I do as I go along here. Because it's the exact same method that I used on my end scale. And, uh, you know, it works pretty well and uh, looks pretty good. So uh, stay tuned. So on the other bridge, I had the tracks extend out roughly five ties. I have no idea if that's prototypical or not, but that's what I'm going to go with on this. So I've got my track run and run out to five ties. You can see I have got a, a felt tip marker. Uh, mark on these, so I will get these cut. I'll have a little bit of rail left over, and uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe I'll weather it and put it along. Actually, actually, I think I will. I'll weather weather that with that hammered iron and just kind of lay it alongside the track somewhere over here. But uh, I'll get that cut. Then I'll get out my Dremel and I'll start to uh, do a little notch on each side here, so that I can kind of bend it a little bit. I don't close the point. Um, just for me, knowing my luck, if I close the point, I would basically short out. Uh, you know, I'd get contact from wheels, whatnot, uh, and I'm not going to go through the effort of closing the uh, the point here and then putting a piece of plastic, uh, you know, in it and shaping it, and making it look like that. I've seen it prototypical where they're not touching, uh, so. I'm going with that, and uh, we'll see what I can do here once I get this cut, and I'll start doing the shaping. So I'm a little farther along. I have the uh, track cut to size, and I've bent both ends in on this track. Still have to do it on this track, but uh, what I'll end up doing is I will take, make sure I've got it bending the right way, these and I will just sort of grab onto the end and then I will give it just, you know, a little twist. I found when I was doing the earlier one uh, months ago that if I bent too much, it would actually break the track and then I'd have to do it again. But if I put it in at, you know, it's not quite a 45, it's probably about a 30 degree angle it doesn't bust. And then I can take my Dremel tool with the uh, diamond cutter, and then I can shape and grind down the edge here so that it gets a, a narrower profile, kind of goes down to a little bit of a point. So anyway, I'm gonna bend this one and then uh, do a little test fit, just see how they look over on the layout, and then uh, go from there. So you can see how this is gonna look. Uh, I use the tie plates that are here as my spacer. So this track is just setting in place. I have not <clears throat> done anything else to it yet. But the uh, tie plates on the rails act as a good spacer when you're putting in the uh, guard railing. So I will go back and I'll grind down the... Uh, walk down, <laughs> otherwise it's going to fall over. So I'll grind this down so that it's got a lower profile working up to the main rail. Same with that, and then do it on the other end. And then uh, 
I'll kind of show as I'm doing that a little bit too. And then what I do on the back side is I take a diamond file and I rough up the entire back side of this because what I'll do uh, when I'm ready to uh, secure it is I will put that rapid fuse on the back side of this rail along its entire length. That way it will bite in on every tie that I've got that it has good contact with. And it looks like this is gonna sit pretty well on the ties all the way along. So uh, that's gonna be the next step. I will grind them down, get the profile I want, rough them up and get ready to glue them. But I'll show you a few more steps along the way. Doesn't take much with that diamond uh, cutting wheel to get it down into the shape that I want. Just grind it off, do one more end, and then uh, these will be uh, ready for another test fit. And then uh, tomorrow, I'll uh, rough up the back side with the diamond file and uh, get them put in place. It really does not take long to put these in. I've got just one rail uh, set in place. I haven't glued, I haven't done anything yet. I've still got to do like I've been saying, I've got to take the diamond file and rough up the back, but you can kind of see how it's gonna look. And I got the other rail just sitting there and spaced off on the tie plates. So uh, I will use those clamps and some other clamps uh, once I put glue on it to get it uh, in position and give it a good bite. And I can come back in and I will paint the rails uh, carefully. I will also kind of touch up the paint on the top of the bridge, give it a little bit more of a darker appearance using that um, hammered iron that I'm gonna paint those rails with just kind of get rid of some of that reddish brown, uh, not do a whole lot, but just yeah, give it a little bit more weathered appearance. So this is gonna work out pretty well, and that will look a lot better having that guardrail on. So anyway, that's it for a Sunday night. I'm gonna wrap it up, and tomorrow night after work, I will uh, get started on it again. So I'm back at the workbench, and I've got uh, this rail flipped over and just sort of clamped onto the uh, the top here uh, just for demonstration purposes because uh, I've got my other hand holding the camera. So what I'm going to use is just a diamond file and just the back side of this is fine here and I'm just going to kind of come in and I am just going to back and forth, circles, swishies, you know, whatever. I'm just roughing up the back of the track and you'll be able to feel it from a smooth track up through here. And I can even feel it just enough to put a little bit of groove in it. That gives it a little bit more bite in my experience with the uh, uh, super glue that I'm going to put onto it. So I'm going to do both of these tracks and then uh, I'll get set up and uh, should be able to get these glued in place yet tonight. So more to come. So a little bit difficult to see, but I've painted in about the first four inches on each of these guard rails. Use the hammered iron just to coat the rail. I did not uh, paint on the bottom where I uh, roughed it up with a diamond file. Did the same thing over on this side, so I'm just going to let this dry for a while, and then I'll be able to go on to the next step, which is to glue it in place, and then I'll come back and do the final painting actually on the bridge once the glue sets. I also took those cut off uh, scrap pieces of rail and have painted those with the hammered iron, except for the ends where I uh, use those as grab points and I'll get those painted here in just a second. So uh, next step will be to uh, get these longer pieces ready to uh, be glued on. All right, I've got the uh, first rail here with the glue on it. So I'm going to gently line it up slowly work it into place here. If I get any glue where I don't want it, right now I don't care because I can come back in and I will be able to paint it. So I just want to get it into position, get a clamp on it. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be super firm, but just enough to kind of give it a bite. And make sure I'm not 
fighting on anything else. over here make sure we're getting it in to everything that we want all right so far so good and same thing we'll just make sure we're not crunching some of the cross bracing underneath the bridge here sure it stays in position as it's drying a little bit of pressure in a couple of spots but you can see how that looks already <clears throat> just make sure it's got a nice bite every place this rapid fuse doesn't take long and rapid fuse actually will bite through the paint a little bit I put the paint on thin enough that it will seat. Okay, we'll let this firm up for a little bit and then I'll come back in. We'll do this next piece. So I put a little bit more uh, clamping pressure on that just to make sure it gets a good bite. One by three, just kind of clamp down on this for a wide space. Nothing over here because this is already solid. And then I just put a couple of heavy bottles, glue and hairspray, just to make sure that the ends of the rails are sitting nice and tight. All right, a few minutes later, second rail is ready to go in. It's exactly the same as the first. I'll get it in position where I want it. And then we'll work it in along the track ties. Make sure we're reasonably even on each end, which we are. All right. Put some pressure on each for a little while. All right, just let this cure for a bit and uh, then I can go on to the next step, which will be to uh, paint the rest of the railing and kind of touch up on top of the deck of the bridge. And that'll wrap this one up. Well, about a half an hour later and I've taken the uh, clamping off and I've got nice uh, guardrails going down this particular bridge. Looks good from all these different directions. What I'll do here maybe tonight yet or tomorrow night is come in and I'll finish doing the painting. Get all of the track looking like this and then I'll do some additional work on the bridge, but that'll be the next segment here. So this was actually pretty short. Uh, didn't take long. You know, uh, from the time I started to uh, rough it up and put it down, it's been a couple of hours and uh, most of that time has been doing other little odds and ends other places. 
So Tuesday night after work, I've been out here just a few minutes. I have everything painted up with that hammered iron and uh, not thick. You know, I left some of the uh, other colors showing through in different areas. I will let this dry. Then I will come back in and clean the track, uh, the main track, not the guardrails. And then I'll come back in and do a little bit of chalking once that sets up even a little bit more. So by the time this evening is done, I will have this bridge 100% completed. And just a quick snippet to uh, show where those two offcut rails ended up. So if the hammered iron on them and then just a little dusting of chalk, pretty passable for uh, rails that are just off on the side of the track. So I'm happy with how that looks. So one last segment uh, once I get back to that the main bridge and then uh, that'll wrap this one up. Weathering is done. The uh, bridge is done. So I like how that looks. Added a little bit of uh, chalk weathering on the guardrails and where the uh, tie plates are. So uh, that wraps that up for this bridge. Now I can turn my attention to uh, painting that track and finishing up in the background as well as some other details on this side before I turn my attention back over to the uh, other side of the layout. So this was a, a fun little project. You know, it, it looks good. It uh, makes those bridges look like they're supposed to be there. So anyway, with that, keep having fun on your layouts. Until next time.